Now let's take a closer look at the genetic legacy of the Neanderthals, whose history has long been buried alive, both literally and metaphorically. This is fascinating because of the mysteries and unanswered questions surrounding our older brothers and sisters, the Neanderthals. The most pressing questions may be why and how they became extinct approximately 40,000 years ago. In this video, we will investigate all of the mysteries surrounding the Neanderthals. It was once thought that Neanderthals were single population that lived in a state of incredible savagery, emitting sounds more akin to the cries of wild beasts than human language. However, according to a new study, Neanderthals followed at least two evolutionary paths before becoming extinct around 40,000 years ago. This study debunks the myth that Neanderthals were one large homogeneous group with similar genetics, culture and appearance. In fact, they were very diverse. According to experts, Homo neanderthalensis was a late archaic form of human that diverged from modern human lineages no earlier than 500,000 years ago and had largely disappeared from Europe and Asia by 40,000 years ago. Many researchers now recognize modern humans and Neanderthals as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, due to their overlapping morphology and genetics. Whether classified as a distinct species or a variant of Homo sapiens, Neanderthals have traditionally been regarded as a genetically consistent population. However, an adult male Neanderthal's partial skeleton discovered in France contains genetic clues to a Neanderthal line that evolved independently of other European Neanderthals for approximately 50,000 years, nearly until the time these close relatives died out, according to researchers. The discovery of a long-lasting isolated Neanderthal population in southwestern Europe lends credence to the theory that these hominids had their own complex evolutionary history with local extinctions and migrations, just like us. The Neanderthal remains known as Thorin, discovered at the entrance to the Grotte Mandarin rock shelter in southern France's Rhone River Valley, has been dubbed the last Neanderthal because he could have lived as recently as 42,000 years ago, close to the time when our closest human relatives vanished. Thorin's genome was analysed to better understand when and how Neanderthals disappeared, despite the fact that only his teeth and portions of the skull have been recovered thus far. In the groundbreaking new study, published in the journal Cell Genomics, a team of researchers led by French archaeologist Ludovic Slimak detailed their discovery that Thorin descended from a lineage of Neanderthals who were isolated for tens of thousands of years, despite the fact that other groups lived nearby. Slimak, who discovered Thorin's remains, proposed two decades ago that Neanderthals in the Rhone Valley were distinct from those in nearby regions based on differences he observed in the stone tools at Grotta Mandarin. He proposed that Thorin and his relatives avoided adopting the new tool-making style seen at other contemporary sites, for unknown reasons. It turns out that what Slimak proposed twenty years ago was very prescient. Indeed, the Thorin population had gone fifty millennia without exchanging a single gene with the classic Neanderthal populations. Other studies have also suggested the existence of two distinct lineages of late Neanderthals. One group is a more modern, up-to-date lineage with strong genetic ties to Homo sapiens, whereas the other is a more archaic Neanderthal group. Indeed, we frequently think of Neanderthals as a single homogeneous group, but recent research shows that there were significant north-south demographic and cultural differences between Neanderthal groups. Genetic analysis reveals that there were at least three distinct geographical groups, Western Europe, the Mediterranean coast, and east of the Caucasus, with some movement between them. For example, morphologically the Neanderthals from El Cidron, Spain, also have a large number of Neanderthal lineage-derived features, despite the fact that some traits place the sample on the edge of Neanderthal variability. Incorporating El Cidron mandibles into the larger Neanderthal sample reveals a north-south geographic pattern. The cave is in the northern region, but southern Neanderthals have larger faces that range in height from higher to lower. Scientists used a route from one of Thorin's molars to identify him as male and generate a whole genome sequence. Thorin was discovered to have high genetic homozygosity, which means identical gene variants often indicative of recent inbreeding, 
and no evidence of interbreeding with modern humans, in contrast to previously published late European Neanderthal genomes. His molar yielded molecular segments accounting for approximately 65% of Thorin's genomic sequence. Thorin's DNA was then compared to DNA samples from other Neanderthals, ancient Homo sapiens and modern humans. It turns out that arrays of gene variants in Thorin's DNA are more closely related to the previously reported DNA structure of Neanderthals who lived around 105,000 years ago, as opposed to Neanderthals who lived between 50,000 and 40,000 years ago. However, analyses of carbon and other diet-related chemical elements in Thorin's bones and teeth indicate that he lived during an ice age, which did not occur in Europe until approximately 50,000 years ago. The period around 105,000 years ago corresponds to a warm period when Homo sapiens first invaded Neanderthal lands, as evidenced by ancient genetics. The findings indicate that the Thorin population had small group sizes and had long been genetically isolated from other late Neanderthal populations, according to genetic data available. The isolation of this Neanderthal group raises concerns about when and why the species vanished. Furthermore, there is evidence of intergroup conflict, including a Neanderthal skeleton from La Roche, a Pierrot cave in France, with a healed fracture on top of the skull, most likely caused by a deep blade wound, and another from Shanidar Cave in Mesopotamia, with a rib injury consistent with projectile weapon attacks. This suggests Neanderthal man, just like modern humans, lived in distinct tribes. Using a variety of techniques, including radiocarbon dating and geological layer analysis, the research team discovered Thorin died between 52,000 and 42,000 years ago. However, according to the study, new evidence suggests Thorin is much more likely to be only 42,000 years old, and thus one of the last Neanderthals. Thorin's genes and final resting place help paleoanthropologists better understand the Neanderthals' final days on Earth. This date of 420,000 years ago is interesting because it corresponds to a partial pole reversal which would have caused environmental chaos in the Northern Hemisphere. Therefore, everything must be rewritten about humanity's greatest extinction, as well as our understanding of the incredible process that will lead to Homo sapiens remaining humanity's sole survivor. How can we imagine populations that have lived in isolation for 50 millennia despite being only two weeks walk apart? All evolutionary processes must be rethought. Nonetheless, Thorin's DNA resembles that of a Neanderthal female from Gibraltar on Spain's southern tip, implying that the newly discovered lineage spanned parts of southwestern Europe, the researchers say. Thorin also inherited from his parents an unusually high proportion of DNA segments with consecutive pairs of identical gene variants. Reduced genetic variation of that kind, previously discovered in Siberian Neanderthals, reflects mating among close relatives in a small population. This lends credence to the theory that Neanderthals living in small, socially isolated groups struggle to maintain a viable population. And because it is scarce, any DNA from that time period is intriguing and contributes to our understanding. Thorin's lineage is thought to have consisted of small networks of closely related communities exchanging mates for the next 50,000 years. The reasons why those ancient groups avoided mating with other Neanderthals in the region, possibly due to language or cultural differences, remain unknown. According to researchers, it is difficult to determine whether Thorin's group population size remained constant or decreased over time, possibly as communities became more isolated. Thorin is currently the only source of ancient DNA in his lineage. Thorin's remains were discovered in a small, naturally formed depression on the rock shelter floor. An older date for Thorin's partial skeleton would indicate, unsurprisingly, that he belonged to an isolated population that died out quickly. Long-term isolation would have resulted in Thorin inheriting a greater number of short DNA segments containing identical gene pairs than the study found. Isolating more of Thorin's DNA or collecting genetic remnants from other fossil members of his lineage will help to clarify the evolutionary history of these close-knit Neanderthals. Since their discovery in 1856, 
Neanderthals have reflected our own humanity. What we believe we know about them has been shaped and moulded to reflect our own beliefs. So, in recent years, following archaeological discoveries, the Neanderthal has been portrayed playing the flute, painting on cave walls, inventing technology, and wearing shell necklaces and eagle claws. He is seen as an armed warrior, king of the north, a vanguard of our biological ancestors. We now know that Homo neanderthalensis were very similar to ourselves, and we met them and interbred frequently. But why did they become extinct while we survived, thrived, and eventually took over the planet? Neanderthals evolved over 400,000 years ago. They were extremely successful, spreading from the Mediterranean to Siberia. They were extremely intelligent, with brains on average larger than modern Homo sapiens. They hunted big game, collected plants, fungi, and seafood, controlled fire to cook, made composite tools, wore animal skins, made shell beads, and carved symbols into cave walls. They cared for their young, elderly, and weak, built shelters for protection, endured harsh winters and warm summers, and buried their dead. Neanderthals did meet our ancestors on several occasions over tens of thousands of years, and the two species coexisted on the European continent for at least 15,000 years. Some paleoanthropologists still argue that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens should be treated as distinct species, despite their now well-documented shared reproductive success, based solely on the length of separate evolutionary trajectories more than 500,000 years, and some anatomical differences. These differences include the skull shape, with Neanderthals having an elongated cranium and Homo sapiens having a more rounded skull, the body plan, with Neanderthals having a massive skeleton with a wide and short trunk, and early Homo sapiens having a tall and slender body with a narrow trunk, and many other distinct morphological differences in almost every bone and joint, including the spinal vertebrae, hip structure, foramen magnum and ear bones. Nonetheless, while skeletal evidence clearly separates Neanderthals and Homo sapiens, the material culture record until 50,000 years ago does not distinguish between the two populations. The lithic technologies observed at the sites are not clearly classified into one group. The two populations left similar material culture remains, particularly lithic industries that used Levallois technology. Furthermore, the populations appear to have followed similar settlement and mobility patterns, including the use of caves and open-air sites for habitation. In fact, another recent study found that Neanderthals and Homo sapiens started burying their dead in and around caves at around the same time, around 120,000 years ago, likely to mark their territories. However, some evidence of Neanderthal is still being buried alive by the scientific community. Fossils can be found in caves buried under a foot of earth with no earth or deep underground. Paleontology and archaeology are not as objective as one might expect. They're extremely subjective. Finally, also according to Slimak, the Neanderthal may have eluded us as we pieced it together from the flesh of various fossils, and instead we may have created a Frankenstein creature. This haunts all of our imaginations. Fortunately, the notion that Neanderthals were simple creatures dragging their knuckles around is a myth that has long since vanished at least in the world of paleoanthropology. And with that tantalizing statement, we'll leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share, and check out our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.